This is ADHD sewing at its finest. Okay, I've decided to do something a little different and instead of individual project videos for each of my 24 vintage makes in the coming year, I'm going to try some vlog style videos that I will hopefully upload every two weeks. These will <laughs> take some pressure off of me in the editing. I won't have to worry about getting everything perfect. I can just get it out and let you enjoy it. So that's my plan. I hope, <laughs> I hope you enjoy this style of content. So um, we'll see. Okay, so I didn't decide to do the vlog style recording until a week in to March, so there's still going to be some time-lapse footage with voiceover. And that's also why I'm wearing a different outfit than I was in the intro. Here you see me starting work on the green wool skirt. My fabric is a petticoat from Colonial Williamsburg that I got when I went shopping there about a year ago. And there's a video linked above if you would like to check it out. I had already taken apart the petticoat, and I did still have to do a bit of unpicking at the hems so that I could press it out and have as much fabric as possible to work with. It was still quite a puzzle to get all of the pattern pieces on the limited fabric that I had, but I did manage it in the end. When I was cutting out the skirt back pieces, I ended up with a narrow bias strip in between the two, and I decided that this was a happy accident because I could use this strip to make piping for the waistline edge. Since this was going to be a skirt and not a dress, it would not be attached to a bodice, and therefore I would need to have a finished waistline edge. And I did manage to get yoke facing or lining pieces for the front and back, even though I had to piece both of them, but that's fine because they'll be on the inside and will not show. Okay, it's time to play. Do I have any thread remotely this color green? Here is my thread rack. I have all-purpose thread on this entire side. And then I have silk up here, a 100% cotton thread on this row. This is all miscellaneous. And then these are also 100% cotton, but they came in this pack of colors. These are colors that make me very happy and I kind of bought them all on a whim but they look beautiful on my thread shelf and then the bottom rack first two rows are fuzzy nylon for sewing knit fabric I think I just bought one of every color that was available when Joann's was having a sale then I have several spools of some heavy duty thread Good for like top stitching on denim, that type of thing. And then serger thread. Lots of black, some extra white. I have white on my serger right now, so there's some empty spaces, but that is my thread collection. Aside from some spools that I have not yet put away from previous projects. All right, so here's the greens. Let's see, I think these three might be closest, so let's go take a look. I think one of these will definitely work. I'm leaning towards this one, but I'm going to unspool a bit of each color and then wind up. And then I usually squint at it, and whichever one disappears first, which for me is this one, so that's what I thought. This is the, the one that's going to work, I think, the best. Let's see. Do you agree with my assessment? I am probably going to use this one for the construction and save this for whatever top stitching there may be. This one's right out. <laughs> what do you know, they're the exact same color. Um, 
Now is as good a time as any to pause and warn you that my camera really struggled to focus on whatever I was trying to show you while I was filming this vlog for some reason. And of course I didn't notice until editing, and by then it was definitely too late to fix, so my apologies in advance. So that's not really an issue then, is it? I'll just use them both as I need to. Cool. I'm about to stitch the front skirt to the front yoke, and I have moved the point of the front skirt up slightly, because I remember when I made this dress the first time around, and I confirmed by looking at my old blog post about it, that it had this weird little bump of excess fabric, and I was able to get rid of that by just pulling up on the skirt fabric, and then this was my stitching line after I did that. So instead of going up to the point, I just kind of curved it, and that worked and made the skirt fit the way I wanted it to. So I have done the same thing here. I think that's roughly what I want it to do. And I'm going to mark, I think I'm going to stitch on the yoke side and mark the stitching line 5 eighths in from the edge so that when I can no longer follow the stitching guide on my sewing machine, because this fabric will be covering it, I will have a stitching line to go with. Okay. I'm back with the piece put together, and I'm not super thrilled with how it's hanging, mostly because I didn't get any gathers in this point, and it should have gathers, so it looks a little funny that the sides have gathers and then the center doesn't, but I think that's because I wasn't sewing between my two lines of gathering stitches at the point like I was along the side. So I have just marked that stitching line on the skirt side with just a little piece of soap. I save my soap slivers because they make great um, marking tools, I guess I would call it a tool. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to unpick this and re-stitch the gathering lines, at least the bottom one, to go underneath where the stitching line is going to be, and then I will be able to gather it, I think, much more evenly. I do think that this is the right height for this point. I don't think that the skirt part needs to come up any further. Yeah, I think the height is right, I just want it to be gathered more so it looks purposeful. Okay, this is the redone front skirt. I like it much better. I think it's going to hang nicely, and I'm ready to pull out my gathering stitches. Okay, the skirt is going together pretty quickly, which I'm happy about. I've gotten the seams pressed really well. <laughs> the main body of the skirt is not pressed quite as well, but I can fix that later. So now it's time to attach the pockets, and so the side seams together. I just need to decide how I'm going to do my seam finishes. I had originally thought about doing French seams, but that gets a little tricky where the pockets get attached, because obviously there will be an opening in the seam, so I'll need to clip in to make that transition, and I don't tend to like how clipping in looks on French seams. So I think I'm just going to overlock the seams and press them open. One thing I did realize is I had planned to have just the yoke be the pocket opening, attach the skirt pieces together right below the seam line, and then attach the pocket just to the yoke itself, but... That's not really a big enough pocket opening. You can see here to here is really how big you need. Six and a half inches. I wrote it down. 
Um, it could be that, if not for the seam allowance at the top. So I'm going to ignore this top dot because I'm just going to have the whole top open and go to here. So it'll be a little bit below the seam, but I think that's okay. Okay, so I just attached the pockets to both the front and the back, and then immediately realized that I shouldn't have done that because I did not account for the yoke, and more specifically, the yoke lining. Yeah, so this seam, this seam allowance should be sandwiched in between this seam here, at least on the back, because these pockets need to extend out to wrap around the front. On the front, it's a slightly different story, because the pockets on this side will fold in to the center. So I could still sew this yoke over top, you know, sandwich the pocket in there instead. So it will end up being like this on the inside versus the pocket being under the yoke. I guess that could work too, but then I'm constrained with how far down this goes. I would have to start attaching the other side of the pocket right at this seam versus if I do it the other way, I could attach it more up here, give me a little bit more room in the pocket bag without having to worry about things coming out the side. So I will just sew right over this seam that I've already done and along the top, but I need to put in the piping. Okay, this is a lot more three-dimensional pretzeling than I was expecting. I just have to make things complicated for myself. I can't just do a straightforward pattern. No, that's that's no fun. Apparently I was talking to the camera without actually hitting record, so that's fun. This has become more complicated once again because I was originally planning on having the piping stretch from the top corner of the pocket all the way across the back yoke and to the top corner of this pocket, but I can't do that because the piping needs to be sandwiched in between the two layers of the yoke, and the pocket needs to be not sandwiched in between. Um, I am also considering interfacing the yoke or the yoke lining. So I decided to go ahead and interface the lining pieces of the yoke, and good news, this little hole in the fabric is well within the seam allowance, so don't have to worry about that. Bad news, I sewed this piece on upside down. <sighs> so now I need to unpick it, sew it back on the right side, lisai. But first! Procrastination. So I have realized that I do not have green buttons, or at least enough of the same color of green buttons, to finish this skirt. So I've decided to go through the rest of my planned wardrobe and pick out any buttons I might need for the other pieces. And if I can't find them in my stash, then I will have to make a trip to the fabric store. But first, I thought I would take the opportunity to show how I store my buttons. So I have these cube shelves, which stack on top of each other. I got them at Michael's. And in this one, with the three drawers, and you can put dividers in the drawers, I have put all of my buttons 
organized by how many I have of each particular button. So let's just take this drawer over and this jacket and vest pattern calls for four buttons on each of these styles so these are the three fabrics that I have planned for a jacket with sleeves and two vests. So I'm going to look at the number four section first. See if there's anything we like. Those are probably too small. Many of these are too small. Okay. This is in the wrong section because there's six of them. <laughs> and oh, it is pretty close to the color I would like for the green skirt, which also will require four buttons. But they're a little too large and not quite the right style. So, putting those aside. These are definitely not the right green. Again, many of these are going to be too small. These are far too large. And they have nothing else close to the right color. So that was a bust. Don't put that back in there. That's not where it goes. Okay, um, I don't think there's any other pieces here that require less than four buttons, so I'm going to go ahead and put this drawer away and come back with the next one. Now, of course, I always start with the smallest number of buttons that I will need and then move up to, I might find something in a larger number, so if I did end up using for example, four of these buttons, then I would put the other three into the three section and have that in case I need three buttons for something else. Okay, so you now go in six. Let's see. have many fives. Nothing that works for any of those. Although, these might work for this dress, which does need five buttons. They're the right color, but they're also velveteen and would probably look pretty silly on this lightweight rayon dress, so I'm going to say no. Go ahead and put those back. Never mind. Okay, nothing in fives. Moving on to six. Okay, no. Maybe. Ooh. These could work for this jacket. No, 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 There's the other three. Oh, I like these a lot. I need to find something to use for these, because they're vintage buttons. I bought a bunch of these um, different styles of simplicity vintage buttons. They were on clearance at the time, I think, so... I knew I wanted to do a lot of vintage sewing and figured I should have buttons that would look the part on hand. Um, you know, maybe these with the plaid vest. I will think about it. No, no. No, no. These are fun. I need to find something fun to do with these. No, again, no. I like these a lot. Don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I really like them. No, no, no. Okay, so I think 
these black ones are a good option for the black vest and then I'll have two left over and they can go in the two section. Um, I'm second guessing these because they might be a bit too small for the jacket. I think for this project I'm going to need buttons at least this big. You know what though? I do have two navy blue buttons left over from my navy blue wool skirt that I was going to put on the waistband of the skirt but I haven't done that yet and I haven't needed them for size adjustability. I'm quite content with the four buttons I have on there now. So if I bought another package of those, I could do those. Okay, so i put those aside for now. Potential for this, unless I find something better. I'm not sold on this as an idea. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Alright, let's see what 7 has for us. These are not the right color green, a little too olivey, and also not the style I'm going for. No, no. Oh, those are really fun. <laughs> no, no. Oh, also, if I have multiple buttons of the same style but different sizes, I will package them together so that I know what I have, because sometimes I might want matching buttons on a set of something. So I put them in the package with the largest number of whatever size has the most, and in this case it's the bigger ones with six. Okay, next drawer. Hmm, this would be nice for a suit. Don't have anything brown at the moment, so those are all out. Ooh, I like these a lot. I think they're a little bit too fancy for the black vest, but I'll find something fun to do with them. Okay, this last section is labeled 10 plus because I ran out of sections and I have 10 or more of all of these. Let's see. Mm, no, too gray. I have a lot of buttons, you guys. Hmm. Too big. Okay. Well, that was kind of a bust. Just found these for the black vest and absolutely nothing for any other <laughs> garment. But wait. This purple dress only needs one button. It's not shown in the pattern illustration, but on the back, there's a button at the keyhole opening in the back. And I only need one, so... I get to take out this thing. And this is where I have stored all of my miscellaneous buttons that I only have one of. I have a lot of purple, so many so that I divided them into two holes and four holes. I did the same with my white. However, 
I do want this button to be a shank button, and I have a small collection of miscellaneous. There's three shank buttons. So let's see. This one's far too light. This one I like the size and shape of. And the color is not bad. It's in the right color family, even though it's not quite dark enough for this purple. But this one, the shape is a little different, but I think that could be fun. So I'll probably end up using this one. So I don't need to buy anything for this dress, but uh, clearly I'm going to have a lot of shopping to do for buttons. I'm going to need four green buttons, four blue or green, two more blue ones. I have two already that I can use, but I need two more of the same kind. And I did recently buy them at Joann's, so I know they have them. Then I need five. Um, could be any of these colors. So I'll see what I can get and what I think will go best with this fabric. And then I didn't talk about it before, but I also want to get buttons for this dress. It doesn't call for buttons, it calls for a side zipper. I'm not going to do a side zipper. Um, but I do want to make the long sleeve version and I'm concerned that the sleeves are going to be too tight and this fabric has no stretch, so I want to make a wrist cuff opening on the sleeves so that I can undo them and potentially turn them back if they feel like they're too long and I want to roll up my sleeves for the day. So I'm thinking I'm just going to get some black shank buttons for this because I think black would be a really nice accent with this. And I do plan to make a matching belt. The pattern does have a belt um, included. And I already have a black buckle. Um, I went through my stash of buckles and found this. So I think that would be a really nice accent. It looks really good with the red. Black and red is a very classic combination. So if I continue that contrast with the buttons at the wrist. I think it will look really nice. Okay, I'm going to take a shopping trip today and pick up some buttons for my projects.
Okay, here's yesterday's button haul. And buttons are expensive, you guys. Yikes. Even though they were having a buy three, get two free sale. And if I'm reading my receipt correctly, that means that these four were free. Which is, you know, cool. I also got some thread. That was also buy three, get two free, so two of those were free. I'm going with this sort of burgundy-ish plum color for the purple and pink dress because I think, same reason I went with these buttons, if I kind of squint at the fabric, this is the color that is most prevalent, I guess. So that's what I went with for both the buttons and the thread, and I think that will blend in really nicely just with all of the colors. And then I picked up these two purples. I didn't have a sample of this purple with me because I wasn't planning on getting buttons for it, so I didn't think to bring it along. And I was going off my memory, and yeah, I think that's, that's gonna be the one. I now have buttons for the jacket, the black vest, the plaid vest, the purple and pink dress, the green skirt. This was the closest thing I could find. It's not really the color at all, but it goes with the green better than anything else I could find. I wasn't digging either the browns or the blacks as an accent for this one, but I really like these, and they're beautiful. And finally, the black for the red dress. So, success! Hooray! But before I work on any of those, I should really finish up this blue wool skirt, which was supposed to be finished February 29th, and it was not, but I have since tacked the hem facing, and I need to press the bottom of the hem really well because it's kind of bubbly right now and a little stiff. And I think I'm also going to add one more layer of top stitching along the top edge of the waistband. Then I can put on the buttons and buttonholes and she will be done and I can wear her. Hooray! When pressing fabric that doesn't like to hold a crease, a wooden clapper can help to keep pressure on the fold as the fibers cool. This will help them retain the shape much more permanently. It has come to my attention that this fabric has never been washed, and the way that I know that is because it still has a raw edge. Whenever I purchase fabric and intend to use it, I will either surge or overlock the edge. This is a, a surged edge. And then immediately wash it before I put it back into my fabric stash. So that way I know if I find fabric on the shelf that has a surged edge or a plain overlocked edge, sometimes I just use my regular machine, then it has been washed and it's ready to use. So this one needs to be washed. It also has somewhere a piece of tape with a number on it. Okay, fortunately that did not leave a mark on the fabric so I can go ahead and wash it without any problems. There's also a spot where whoever owned this before me cut out a swatch. So now it's time to overlock this, which I will show you because I have a tip. And the tip is, use any thread you want. It doesn't have to match your fabric. It doesn't even have to be good quality thread. This is a great time to use up old spools with very little thread left, polyester thread if you're trying to switch to all cotton, and vintage thread you may have inherited or picked up at a thrift store or estate sale. It doesn't have to be good thread, it just has to pass through the machine without breaking and survive exactly one wash. 
This is also a good time to use up odd colors of bobbins left over from projects you have finished. Like I said, we're using up thread here, so don't be afraid to run out, just replace it with the next spool, because again, the colors don't matter. Although, maybe don't let the end of the thread run all the way through the machine like I did, or you'll get a tangled mess. I ran out of raw edges to overlock before I ran out of thread on the second spool, so I went on a hunt for more unwashed fabric in my stash. I found several pieces, so I might as well overlock them all now. I don't bother with clipping the thread in between, I just start the next raw edge right where I left off. I do clip them apart before washing, though. All those empty bobbins. Okay, I should get back to the project at hand. Now that I have buttons, hooray. And I have my interface thing sewn on the correct way now. So I think the next step is going to be the piping for the waistband. I've got this nice big old cone of cooking twine, which I originally got for doing my Regency corded stays. Worked really well for that, and it's also going to make excellent piping, I think. This whole process is like a logic puzzle. So I need the piping to be this length, and then that will get sandwiched in between the two yoke pieces along the top, but also the pockets need to fold out, so they are also going to have to be sandwiched in. This is the back piece, it has the seam down the center. So, I would normally sew the cord into the piping on its own first, before attaching it to the garment, but on this one I needed a specific measurement and closed ends on either side, so it was just a little easier to sew it to one side of the yoke first. When I make piping, I like to use the zipper foot for my machine, as it can get close to the cord with the machine needle moved all the way over to one side. Then when I go to sandwich the piping into a seam, I switch to the buttonhole foot, which has these convenient grooves in the underside. With the needle back in center position, the piping cord, if it's small enough, can glide right through the groove just to the side of the needle. This gets the stitching even closer to the piping and makes for a very uniform finish. So I messed that up pretty badly. I was supposed to leave the pockets free at the top and I sandwiched them in because I guess I just wasn't thinking. <sighs> I should have sewn the pocket on first and then flipped it out and come back and sewn the top seam. 
And then I guess I would need to flip the pocket back in and sew up the side. Or maybe And then my camera battery died, so who knows what I was going to say. It's a mystery. <laughs> Alright, I've taken the pockets off of the back. I just opened up the seam here. I left it in the middle because I don't want to have to redo that piping. But now I need to add the top facing. That I'm going to put on these pockets. I got these scraps of leftover material so I don't throw anything away. I've got my pockets sewn across the top, and I think I'm calling this the inside? Anyway. And the usual thing to do now would be to cut this excess fabric off at an angle in order to get a sharp corner, but this fabric is a little bit delicate and prone to fraying, so I don't really want to cut it that close to the stitching. So I have a method I use in situations like this um, after I press everything flat to set the stitching. I will fold right along the stitching line on one side and then fold right on the other side and that makes a nice, you know, square point and then I feel on the inside and grab that fabric with my thumb and forefinger, turn it around to the outside and that gives you a sharp point and then I'll very gently tease it out with my point turner. So there's going to be a little bit of bulk there, but it's not bad. This fabric is pretty thin, and I don't have to worry about it poking out and having a raw edge there. So. And there we have a nice finished edge for the top of my pocket. Do you ever forget you're wearing lipstick and then sneeze? Good times. Okay. I've got the back yoke pinned back on with the pocket now enclosed only on the side seams. It is free up at the top. It will match up with the seam allowance right there. I hope. So I can sew that back on and then I get to do the piping on the yoke for the front which is going to be its own complicated beast. I've left the pockets on because they're going to be sandwiched at the top, so that's fine. So I'm going to need to add the piping along the front, stopping at the seam allowances then fold these in and put the yoke 
lining over the top. Okay, so then when this gets turned, the pocket goes with the yoke lining because it needs to be on the inside and voila, pocket inside the yoke, yes, piping along the top edge. Okay, proof of concept, cool. Okay, so I'm not sure this skirt was a good candidate for the split side treatment with pocket pockets because it's going to gap at the pockets no matter what I do. Also, I kind of forgot that my plan for the closure was to make loops for the button, and I should have sandwiched that into the seam. <sighs> it's also a tiny bit too small, which is confusing to me because the original dress I made does still fit me, and I did make this one like a s half a size bigger and I used smaller seam allowances on the front so I I don't know why <sighs> well I wanted to end this vlog on a you know look I've made it it's gonna work note but that was not to be Oh well. And somehow, the yolks don't even line up. How? How, how did that happen? I'm so confused. Honestly, I was expecting this to happen. I had every reason to believe that it would happen. <laughs> I hoped that it wouldn't, <sighs> but I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I think this project is probably going to go on the back burner for a while and I will continue to brainstorm solutions while trying to fall asleep at night. Let's see how well that goes. Um, yeah, so I'm going to move on to something new. Give my brain a break for a while. But it's midnight and I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, future Chelsea here coming in from editing because I didn't want to leave on that note. It's been a week and I have not worked on the green skirt because I do not know what I'm going to do. I have already graded the seam allowances and trimmed off the corners so there's not a lot of alteration I can squeeze out of it at this point. But I will be moving on to other things you will see in my next vlog, and I don't know, we'll come back to this one when I have figured out how to fix it, because I am determined to have this skirt in my wardrobe. I really love how it's looking, just not how it's fitting, so we're gonna figure something out. We'll fix it. Thanks for watching so far, and let me know how you like the tips and tricks that I've sprinkled in throughout. I enjoy sharing my sewing knowledge, and I don't typically put very much in my regular sewing videos because I feel like I need to stick to the subject at hand and show what I did and how I made the thing and not get too wordy and make the video too long, but with this style, I think it's okay if I go extra long, so... I just threw it all in and we'll see. And if you do like the vlog style format, definitely leave me a comment and let me know. If you didn't like it, I very much doubt you're still watching, so no need to comment that. And that's all for now. I will see you in my next video. Bye. I kind of got my thread. Motorcycle.
don't know if it's focusing on that. Hide my face. 